uh, a late joiner or two that you know it typically is um, and if that happens say la vie it's it's all good um, so any I, I should say any requests at the uh, before we get into people muting microphones and stuff is there anything which by the way for those of you that are in pro for you in particular practicing with us for, uh, for the first time it's not going to I think a lot of people have the impression from what they see on YouTube videos or going to gyms or studio yoga studio classes back when we used to go places <laughs> um, and, and they think that that somehow um, yogis are allergic to talking like if anyone dare raise their voice during a class we'd all like you know and we're out of existence or something that may be the case I don't want to speak for all people who practice yoga perhaps with some of them if you speak during the practice everything just you know the universe becomes untethered but I'm down with it so if you if you have anything that pops I mean a lot of questions can wait till the end and that's fine but if there's something you're like oh I'm not feeling that you know this doesn't feel right or I'm wondering about this just you absolutely can put your microphone back on and, and get my attention okay um, any requests today I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do this which is my taking off the specs which means that those of you on screen who I could barely see now I really cannot see at all <laughs> so so if you're doing this you're waving um, and you're thinking wow what a, what a jerk I thought this guy was uh, supposed to be working toward enlightenment or something what's his deal it's just my, my site why am I taking it off because I have no uh, cheat sheet or crib notes um, like when I practice on my own I don't use notes I just move my body and it's a kind of a an eternal debate at least for this teacher I don't know about other teachers um, about how planned ahead of time do you plan do you have a plan and then ignore the plan do you just show up and do your thing well today here I am so which isn't to say that I don't have kind of a uh, an idea of where we're going but with that in mind I'm totally I'm always regardless of, of what I might have cooking open to any requests so if any of you um, obviously this doesn't work for those that are watching uh, on the YouTube channel after the fact but for those of you that are here live anything that you would like to do anything that you'd say like ah at least we did that in the yoga practice please let me know sorry you can see I really can't see here um, please let me know and I'm happy to do my best to address any requests You like my description in the email you want to do that deal any anyone else we're, we're all good with that building some heat yeah okay so yes I was there was a distressing moment looking at the window at around midnight and seeing actual snow I was like no um, but hey the cold weather doesn't have to be uh, the enemy um, we as human beings we can generate heat kind of on command um, like in my own practice, I'm, I'm not a big, uh, I guess different, every different, once you really kind of develop a yoga practice, there are different limbs of a yoga practice. You know, there's the physical practice, there's the, um, you know, the meditative practice, there's an ethical practice, there's a practice of service. Um, and all of these things touch on, like, I think that, you know, in a, in a healthy dynamic yoga practice, um, you have aspects of all of those things. We tend to here the ET group we do meditation and mindfulness on the off weeks this is partially an explanation for newcomers um, and then on the uh, even weeks or the the other odd because um, with me it's always a little odd <laughs> um, we do the movement we do asana um, what we don't do a ton of actually is breath work and just you know full disclosure part of the reason is that a lot of the yoga breathing techniques are uh, counterindicated like there there's a lot of emerging science that says that um, they're not particularly great for people with a variety of conditions anything from anxiety to trauma to asthma obviously um, and also to epilepsy so you know one really awesome way of generating heat is breath practice 
Um, it's also though it's one that and it's one that I've been playing with a lot myself recently. Um, but it's not uh, it's not worth you know the potential risks um, once we start messing around with our nervous system in that kind of most direct way. So today, what we're going to do, as I mentioned, this is just a little prelim, um, so you know where we're going. If in case you didn't read the email. We are going to try to generate heat without getting up onto our feet, without a whole bunch of dynamic movement. And then the, the jam, if you will, of this practice is after that, that initial warming up, okay, um, within the practice itself, really having the decision, the kind of felt decision, so you're not thinking your way through so much, but as we move through the poses, can you... Um, actively decide how much do you want to bring to the table? Do you want the pose to be a relaxed pose? Do you want it to be a more activated pose? Okay, I'll cue some options there and you can decide uh, truly a choose your own adventure yoga wise. All right, um, I should also say because I'm here as I often am uh, sitting in hero pose that this is an example and so uh, as I was saying to you Pearl when you joined this is an example of something that is really comfortable in my body right now. Um, and when I say right now, because if we went like 10 years ago, I would have been rolling around in agony because this is, would have been so uncomfortable. It's just, it's part of the practice. You practice moving your bodies in certain ways and ta-da, things can, can change. So don't feel the need to hold a pose like this if it's uncomfortable. Not for one second and certainly not for like five minutes, whatever I'm going on here, okay? Instead, what we're going to do, and I'm gonna actually come back a little bit in space, is you can decide, um, we're gonna ultimately come up onto um, hands and knees in a moment, but we're not gonna begin there. And, I, and really here, we don't have to, this is the real trick, is how do we generate heat without a lot of big, you know, thrusty dynamic movements. Well, we're gonna play with that, okay? But to start, let's actually start with the breath, since I had started talking about that. One form of breath that is uh, frequently um, referenced in a yoga class is something called ujjayi breath or uh, victorious breath. It's sometimes called ocean breathing because it literally is the sound, it's, you know, can sound like the ocean. The, the gambit, if you are interested in trying here, is simply to bring a light, a gentle, and I mean not a lot, uh, a gentle constriction at the back of the throat. The idea is that by um, reducing the space of breath there, you're going to be conscious of the inhales and the exhales moving through that sort of more restricted passage. So one way that you can to actually feel this, okay, is to just bring a hand up in front of your mouth, okay, and then imagine that hand was like a little pane of glass, cold weather, okay, warm breath, and just heat up the glass. So it's inhale, through your nose if you can, and then through, normally we'd have pursed lips or closed lips, but this time we're gonna go, okay, and really fog that breath up. And part of that, it's not really just the blowing out, it's that constriction at the back of the throat, okay? And then, the trick is, is to tie that constriction into the inhales as well. So almost like you were um, fogging that glass up on the inhale as well. So it's... And I'm across the room, so I'm not sure how much of that you're picking up. But if it sounds like Darth Vader, too much, okay? Uh, definitely not kind of vibe that you want in yoga practice, Darth Vader. But Instead, it's just a controlled breath, okay? Slightly constricted, and you're watching it move in and out, okay, as we practice. That being said, you can ditch all of that and simply follow your breath. Just be aware of it, noticing the inhales. Let's do that now. Inhale. Exhale. Take a few of those. I'm not gonna cue it, just follow your breath. You might even count, notice, how long is my inhale and exhale. So I was counting funny with my fingers. 
inhale. But if you were watching, exhale, you'd see that it was a little bit longer than the inhale. Well, let's try to bring it to even so that inhales are matching exhales. Let's take five more on your own at your own pace. So keep breathing. I'm just admitting a latecomer here to our class. Of course, you're sitting on your bum if sitting on your forward legs is at all uncomfortable. And I'm just saying a global welcome to our new arrival. I can't see at this point what, what name's coming up, but welcome, welcome. I look forward to connecting with you post-practice. Please join us. You might wonder, like, so what is this all about? Like, why are we dialing into our breath? Like, what's the point of that? There's so many things we could pay attention to. Why that? Well, there are so many reasons. I'm not going to enumerate them instead. I'm just going to suggest this. Can you breathe as if it is nourishment? Like, as if this is something that is actually fueling your body, bringing energy in. Exchanging chemicals and energy out back into the world. That's enough. I think that that's enough of an explanation. That the breathing is something, as we start to roll forward up onto our knees a little bit here. The idea of just nourishing ourselves, it's such a nice metaphor for the entire practice. Okay. Now, I said that we're going to generate heat right off the bat, but let's actually, it's not quite true. Let's slowly come to hands and knees, okay? So a tabletop position. And I've actually, you won't necessarily say here, I brought one foot in between my legs so you can see my toes. My toes are actually on the ground, okay? And bringing your knees back in space, just a gentle warm up here. But if you think of your body, you're literally as a bellows, this may generate some heat, okay? So we're gonna move through cat cow pose. So moving into cat as we inhale, drop your belly down, tail comes up, chin and eyes lift, not losing your neck, okay? And then exhale, curl your spine in the opposite direction. Inhale. Exhale. So these first few breaths are just exploratory. And the body can move. It's not just the breath that we're moving through here, it's our bodies as well. So exhale, upper back rounds up towards the sky, pressing into your hands. Inhale, roll everything down, allow the belly to drop into that cow, okay? Everything else up, up at the back. Exhale, curling in the opposite direction. Now here's where you can build some heat. And there is obviously a breath element, so go slow or go steady. And if it starts to feel too vigorous, too invigorating, then you back off, okay? So I'm gonna pick up the pace. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. So we're not aiming for hyperventilation, we're just nourishing. But already I'm Building heat. So you can slow down or speed up. And I didn't cue it, but I've reversed the polarity. So I'm inhaling into my cat now and exhaling into my cow. Why, you might ask? 
as we can. See how it changes things up. Whether you're going fast, whether you're going slow, let's say three more of these, maybe beginning to breathe through pursed lips, so through the nose. And then allow yourself to come back. You can drop back onto your heels and perhaps then bringing your hands forward, reaching your fingers. You can see I'm really stepping them forward toward the front of my mat and dropping your armpits down. Now we're not worried about placing them directly on the mat or anything, but we're just feeling like everything under here is getting bigger, open as we open the shoulders up, dropping the head down and then begin to slide your hips back in space towards your heels if they've drifted forward, okay? Still working in opposition, maybe tenting your fingers up in this modified child's pose, okay? But you know what they say also goes with childs or children, not just pose, but play. So let's bring a little play into our child's pose. From here, can you take both hands out to one side? So I'm coming to my right, my left is reaching even further, and then again with that opposition, okay, what I'm gonna do is oppose the reach of my left hand by taking my left hip away and stretching into that whole side body. Breathe into those left side ribs. And here, feeling that expand. Good. And then, like we're playing piano, we come across. Inhale into the right side ribs. Pulling opposing right hand. Inhale, exhale. Away from right hip. Come on back in. And then sweep the hands back. Bring them back onto our lap. Cool. And then... From here, inhale, arms come up, exhale, hands come down through the middle into prayer position, and then we're simply gonna reverse that action. So a different sort of dynamic movement. Inhale up, exhale, open. Just five of those. Inhale. Exhale. So there isn't a lot of tricky movements here. So instead, you can really imagine the body as a pump. Two more of those. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale to open. Inhale, close. Exhale, release. And then just a little release of all of that. Just shake it out, okay? And then here's just, when I was saying about playing, let's just see where we are on our mat, okay? So without lifting your hips away, and by the way, this can be done sitting cross-legged, okay? So you don't have to accomplish that change up, okay, if you're happy the other way. But let's bring our hands out, okay, and then press out. Feel the shoulders roll around the side. So almost as if your shoulders are rolling out to each side, away from the spine, you're pressing. And then this is a move that we had practiced last week, and then Without changing the shape of your hands, just boom, drop the shoulders back. Shoulder blades move towards the spine. And that can be, let's make this a little bit of a quicker pump. So press and back, press and back, press and back, press, and then bring your hands down wherever they land. It might be in front of you on the mat, it might be in your lap, it might be together. Okay, so we're here. Notice the shift in weight that we have to accomplish to bring the hands forward. 
can you move them any further forward without disconnecting your sitting bones from the ground or your sitting bones from your heels if you were back in hero pose. So how far, this is the play that I'm saying, how far can I come forward? So this is just a gentle bend into the hips without needing to release my sitting bones. And that for me is about it. And you might be here, and you might be here. Again, this is a race with no winner. <laughs> So just breathing your way forward. And then we're gonna follow roughly that root to the side that we had before. Notice how this changes the pose up, okay? Not child's pose, but really just sort of a semi-forward fold. And come across, 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 stretch. We'll sweep the hands into the middle. Inhale, bring everything up. Exhale, hands come down. And then from here, can you get really, really heavy in your right sitting bone, okay? So that's the one that we wanna stay super connected in because it's gonna to wanna to lift off. And then with that right hip connected down, can you turn your upper body to the side? Hands come up, okay? And then exhale, hands come down. This may or may not be accessible, right? Bring this little twist, okay? Inhale up, let's try that again. Really inhale and bring the spine long so the top of the head is coming up toward the ceiling. Hands out, and then with that long spine, bring the hands down. Watch that sitting bone, it wants to lift up, especially with the right hand coming down. Okay, this is where if, come on back into center, if you're, you know, I don't know why anyone would be frustrated about an inability to get their hands down here because like talk about low stakes activity. <laughs> but let's say you work, then that's where you could bring a pillow or a block or really anything, you know, a pile of books here and you can play with this. Like if this is an important thing to you, like actually I really want to be able to do this in my life or in my practice, then you can play with a little, you know, bring the floor to you and over time we drop down. Okay, enough of that. Let's just come to the other side. So we'll bring our hands out to wherever's comfortable and then come out. You might be able to slide them. Left sitting bone, I didn't cue at that time, but did your body remember? Okay. Maybe come up, hands out, and then we'll just drop down. Up and in. Sweeping back up, let's find ourselves back in this um, tabletop position, okay? And the pose here, it's a little bit of a balance pose. So what we don't want to do is put ourselves a little bit of balance to challenge our equilibrium. Awesome. So much balance that we're here and then not so good, okay? That was controlled landing. <laughs> So what we want to do, let's actually just notice first, have you got your knees underneath your hips, okay? Have you got your hands roughly under your shoulders? And then the veterans of this practice may know that we want to turn the eyes of our elbows forward. So here are the eyes. They tend to be facing each other. We spin them out forward like that so that we put the shoulders into a healthy position, okay? And we're gonna try this, I'm gonna give you different options so you can decide how much um, teeter you wanna bring into your totter, okay? Let's lift the right foot up, okay? So I'm balancing with my left here, you can see I brought my left toes into the, the frame, okay? So that I'm not like this, that is actually harder, this is easier, okay, good. And then really just holding the leg out, pressing through the heel, okay? Squaring the hips and then with both hands glued to the mat, okay, gripping slightly, okay, so you're not just pancaking there, you're actually hugging the mat up toward you, and then right knee comes in toward your chin. Find that cat back again, that's one. Kick out. So we're gonna exhale as the knee comes forward, and then inhale. Now, 
you decide. This can be totally chill. Press and release the leg. Ooh, maybe even just point the toes back and forth. Not collapsing into the shoulders, so super strong still at the front, okay? Maybe bend the knee and press the foot up in space. Oh, this is weird. I'm trying to figure out where my foot is <laughs> reversed on the camera. Okay, don't look at yourself doing yoga. And then knee comes forward. So see, you can play back there, relaxing, a little bit of ease, or come forward. I'll leave you three passes. You decide, ease or effort. And that last one again, I decided to switch the breath up just to see what's happening. Now, I'm not cueing this, but if you're not watching me, what I'm doing, my knees are on the ground, my hands are on the ground, and I'm just circling my hips especially through that right side, okay? So we've kind of closed the chain of our bodies. It's connected to the mat, but I can just sweep through here and release some of the tension that we've maybe created in that back <coughs> butt, okay, the glute. Let's move into the other leg. So left leg comes out. Try, notice here the tendency also to like, here I'm lifting my leg so you can see that, to open the hip up. What we want to do is have everything pointing down. So like if our hips had headlights, the headlights are pointing down this time, okay? Toes are pointing down, heel is pressing to the back wall. Inhale, and then exhale, knee comes forward to chin. So this time I'm gonna say nothing, let's just practice this, you decide, effort or ease. Last one, let's see, mine went from effort to ease on this side and I brought in a little play. Okay, and then from here, um, what we're gonna do is bring our arms into it. So, if you are happy where we were, see, uh, if you're wondering, is this heat generating? At least on this mat it is. <laughs> okay, so this is a, by the way, this is a modified, it's called bird dog which I totally, as a dog lover, I totally love. Like you're the dog looking for, I guess it would be the, the bird. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do. You can stay with just legs, or as you lift the right leg up, you can perhaps bring the left hand, okay? And then from here, elbow comes in toward knee. On the exhale, Really billow that back up. We're gonna start relaxed, okay? We don't need to press here. There's a lot going on to keep things square, to keep them balanced. But you can see, and I'm gonna speed this up. This could be a way of generating heat. I'm moving faster than my breath. But this feels so much nicer. Last one. Okay. And let's give ourselves a roll through. We didn't get into that hip, but just before we get into the left hip, let's roll into that left hip a little bit. I neglected that on the other side. Sorry about that. Okay. And then left hip turns down, toes turn down, heel back. Option, and look, the option doesn't have to be the hand flies up here, right? It may be it's a little hover. You're just off the mat. You're playing with this, right? There's a lot of goodness in one inch off the mat. No joke, okay? So you're there, or you're there, or you're there, or you're there. And in. So the simple formula might be I generate heat until I'm hot, until I'm warm until I don't need to do that anymore and then I can 
tap into my innate ability to find peace, to find, excuse me, my exhale relaxation rather than just pumping the bellows, okay? Let's let that go. And then a global roll, so let's hit both sides. So hips come back in space, hips come back in space. One each way, and two each way. All right, and then from here, let's transition. We're gonna have one where we really raise up. We're gonna have to tr um, turn our bodies over, okay? So we're gonna come just gently to one side, and then legs come out onto the mat. And we'll start by bringing our feet down flat on the mat. By the way, I think that this, I've shown this a few times, this is a, a kind of a nice sitting pose, okay? Pardon me, nothing lazy about this pose. And it actually, again, to me, it's like you're sitting in a chair, but no chair. Okay, belly comes down towards the top of the hips, or the front of the hips. We've got feet activated, and then here, ready, right? Feet drop down. Let's just try that. Toes up, toes down. Ooh, toes up, I got a little crampy action there on the inside and step of my one foot. Isn't that interesting? Not all challenging feelings are bad. Some challenging feelings are information. Okay, and then, and you don't see him, but just off the camera, Henry the dog has begun his own cycle of upward and downward dog, seeing where we're going. <laughs> Yoga is contagious. There it is. All right, now, hands are gonna come down behind your bum, okay, underneath your shoulders, okay? And this is a nice, this is reverse tabletop, so very similar to where we were, but what we're gonna do, and this might be a big move, okay, I'll show you, where we lift up, okay, or, and it's a really nice stretch as I'm here for the fronts of my shoulders and the chest, and then come down. But our lift up might be one inch, and just noticing how that feels, okay? So play with that. We're coming up and down, and pause. Now, if we're here, and again, if the purpose is relaxation, is lifting up in this kind of a pose super relaxing? No. Is it generating heat? Yes. But can we transition from the, the heat to a more relaxing expression of that lift? So rather than and coming up, it's just a gentle, imagine that you're not pressing everything down and in and constricting, it's just open. And come down. Inhale, open. Here, let's find this little ridge. You can see that I'm kind of sitting on, oops, sorry, you may be able to see that I'm sitting on this little ledge, okay, where my sitting bones are. Now, I've already lifted my feet up, not necessary, but that's where we're going. So, one other really nice way that we can generate heat in this position is through boat pose. So, let's find our boats, okay? And here we are, right? Almost like we have oars and we're ready to move. Oh, I actually like that just as it is. Let's find that, that action. See, some of the best moves are just from exploring what your body wants to do in the moment. Yeah. I have never taught boat pose like this. And yet, here we are. And this is actually kind of cool. Rock the elbows back. You can see I'm keeping my hands forward in position as if I was rowing. Oh my goodness, I didn't check where I was rowing to. I better head back. So let's switch up. Keep breathing, okay? Notice the tendency to hold our breath. Last one. And then we're gonna release all this tension that we've created here by simply bringing the leg down, bringing the leg down. Whew. And then you might want to actually bring one foot on 
Okay, hands are here, and then simply lift up. Opening up that hip, working the other one, and switch. Okay, now, boat pose more traditionally understood. Find that ledge, bring your legs together, okay? And really bringing your hands here underneath and behind the knees, okay? Shoulders, if they're crunching in, if you're all, you've gotten small, don't be small. Be proud, show yourself, okay? Open the chest up, open the collarbones wide. So you've got room for that breath to enter. I mean, a lot of the times people have difficulty breathing, it's because they're in this constructed ball that they're moving through life in, okay? So we're open, we're proud, the chin is up, but it's back. And then begin to bring one foot up. Let's start there, okay? You can actually hear you can take all the work out of your legs. So you can decide, do I want to make this work? Leg lifts on its own. Do I want to make this ease? Arm helps. Okay? And then the other. And exhale it down. And then maybe when you're ready, and without, what we don't want to do is bump into our low back. So if to keep this position, I have to do this, then I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay there. Okay? So we're here, we find our, our ledge, we're hooked in, everything hugging in, holding up, and then tilt back ever so slightly to lift the feet up. And breathe. And maybe lift one foot up. Maybe lift the other. Maybe take your breaks here too. Okay, I'm showing lots of options, so I'm staying in this. But you, maybe let go, can decide what feels good. So, like right now, major work going on. Does this feel super nice? No, it feels super worky. I'm gonna let that go. Ooh, and I'm gonna let that go. All right. Um, by way of bringing ourselves down toward the mat now, what we're going to do is slowly, and be careful here, especially if we've got, I know um, we've got some low back issues going on out there. So just rather than, I'm going to roll down, or, I, you know, this might be comfortable to roll down like that, so that you're actually connecting your low back right onto the mat. But equally, you might decide, I'm going to use my hands, I'm going to slowly transition, and I got to the same place. Okay? When you get there, we're going to modify this. This is a half boat. So legs come together, and then bring one foot up, away, just one. Toes come up, exhale it down. You notice that I brought my upper back away from the mat, and as much as it's comfortable, you want to do that. If this is bothering your neck, hands come in, give yourself a little like a cot, okay? And in fact, you can allow the head to drop into the hands, and elbows come out, and then inhale both feet up, and you can probably hear some shaking, some effort. You might even bring in a little flutter with the legs. Five, four, three, two, breathe. And one, relax, release. last heat generator and then it's all downhill energetically speaking and i have no idea what time it is i can't see anything oh we're coming toward the end okay wow let's um if there was one last way that i would want to be able to share how to generate heat on the mat it's bridge pose there are not enough bridges in our lives so what we're going to do is come onto our backs Okay, allow yourself to reset and reset your breath if you've lost touch with it. So just notice where it's at. Breath could be that Ujjayi breath I talked about. It could simply just being aware of that simple exchange. Out and then in. Okay, feet under, roughly under knees, bringing the backs of your upper arms onto the mat beside you. Okay, 
normal curves of your spine. So here, what we don't want to be doing is pressing our spine actively into the mat, the lower spine, like we were doing in that half boat. Allow there to be a little bit of room to pass underneath, okay? And then fingers can be, at least start, up toward the ceiling. Spread your toes, okay? Give yourself a nice big base of support. And then we get deliberate about how we're going to do this. So this time, we've done a lot of pumping action, kind of in, out, in, out. This time it's a hold, okay? So I'm gonna leave it to the group. I'm gonna hold and be quiet, and when you're done, allow yourself to gently come down and just find, not, it's not gonna be our final resting pose, but just recline and relax, okay? So ready, here we go. Inhale and begin to lift the tail off of the mat. Curl it away, feel the muscles in your legs starting to activate to bring the hips up and away. And then further, further, press those hip points up toward the ceiling. Notice the tendency for the knees to separate, so I'm obviously exaggerating that. Imagine we had a magnet between the insides of our knees and that magnet is holding them in toward one another. You can also accomplish this by pressing into the big toe bases of your foot and lifting your pinky toes up a little bit. Tough for the knees to separate when we move our, put our feet into that shape. And you may not have even noticed, but we're holding here. So you decide when you want to come out. You can stay, hello buddy, you can stay here as long as you want, or maybe bring your, thanks pal, bring your hands underneath. You might even be able to press into, again, if it's effort that you're after, press in, thanks pal, Step, uh, press into the upper arms to lift a little higher. If less effort is what we want, we don't have a block, that's okay. Bring your hands together, interlace your fingers, place them behind or underneath your bum, and allow your bum to come down. And if that's not comfortable, two fists separated, same deal, we've got kind of a little makeshift block. Still a bridge, you're still lifted up, but much more relaxing. And let that go. Feet come together, inhale, bring them up, inhale, bring them all the way up, if that feels comfortable, or stay at this First stop, okay? And then from here, feet come in, bring your left hand to the front right side of the right knee, ground the right shoulder so you can bring the arm out to the side and allow both legs to drop out. So they're dropping to the left side. Sorry, my bad on the cue there, okay? And then you're gonna kinda, there's a little wiggle around here, but let's see if we can wiggle to bring the left leg right underneath, so bring it forward, and bring the right leg across our bodies. This is where if you wanna get really fancy, you can even kind of curl the right foot up if it's accessible and reach for it with your right hand. Give yourself a stretch at the front of the hip as well. But if that is not feeling accessible, you do it later. It doesn't have to be part of the twist. Okay, let's release out of that. Gently, slowly, hips come back to neutral. Inhale, bring your feet up. Exhale, hand on the outside. And drop over. Ooh. And be aware that one side may have restriction where the other one doesn't. That's okay. Breathe here and notice how the breathing changes with this twisted, constricted, <laughs> Set up. Work around whatever obstructions there might be in your vicinity, like canines. Bring the hip through, extend the leg out. Option to bind if you want, if you can reach. And if you can't, this is where you could use a strap, but again, that's a pose for a different day. Ooh, we're gonna miss a little crack there, release that out. And then from here, 
any last pose. So if we had cameras pointing in the other direction, it could look like a lot of things on the other end of the camera, but if there's something before coming to your resting pose, and I say resting pose because that could be corpse pose like I am right here, or that could be seated, but before you get there, is there anything that feels like, you know what, for this to be feel kind of like I've done what I wanted, I came here to do, like a complete practice, do that now, okay? So what is it for me? I think today it's happy baby. So bring the foot up, actually a half happy baby, right? Why not? So just bringing one foot up and then the other. Maybe putting it all together. Maybe rolling around a little bit. Again, there's lots of options. Release. Release it in whatever pose you're in. But I am going to just take the lights down a little bit. Final couple of minutes here to rest. Notice I did not say to analyze your practice, to plan the rest of your day, to ruminate about things that have already happened. Instead, I mean, you can do all of those things, but why not rest? Just follow your breath. Don't control it anymore. If you've got any constriction at the back of your throat, let it go in just a moment or two here in silence. Let the practice sink in. say exactly as you are if what I'm about to cue feels premature. In fact, if you were practicing and you were watching this as a recording later, this might be where you just pause the video and chill out for as long as it feels good. But when you're ready, bringing one hand behind your head to support your neck, rolling to one side, just finding this sort of little modified fetal position. Hand comes down onto the ground. Maybe kicking a leg out to give yourself a little bit more support or coming up however works for you. Okay. There it is. You gonna make an appearance on camera? Come here, pal. Oh, you're a good boy. You're such a good boy. Thanks, friend. You, he, it's, isn't it funny? He knows he's like, I know I'm not supposed to be on camera right now, but I really want to be with you. I'm sorry, boy. You don't have to worry. Come here. Come here. Come here. See, dogs know, right? Uh, if you can see me at all doing this, yoga is about connection. This guy gets it. Oh, thanks. Sorry, I was bringing my hands up to close the practice, pal. Okay. <laughs> practice over for him practice is over for us peace in peace out thank you all for all you do for bringing it and I think I can put these things back on <laughs> we could do that all day or I could do that all day but let me stop this. Bye out there in the interweb.